Welcome back to the College Cod Summer Open, presented by E-Fuse. The $5,000 tournament has reached its portion of double elimination. That's right, we're in the top eight teams out of the original 32 who are going to still be competing again for that $5,000 prize pool. My name is McCormill. Alongside myself is Proper Cast. We've been having a great time during our brief little intermission, but now it's really where we start to crack down on the best teams here. This is where we start to see our front runners and who shows the most potential to be our champion. Yeah, you know, that final that final match uh, to be able to qualify for this double elimination bracket, I mean, that was already test number one. Sure. That was Those were piranha-infested waters. Now you're in shark-infested waters with all of these top uh, collegiate teams wanting to pick their way to make it all the way to grand finals and it'd be able to get their top uh, part of their prize. Sure. But still, uh, when it comes down to it, these winner round one matches in this double elimination bracket is going to be a big test be able to see where a lot of these teams stand whether or not they can be feeling pretty good about some of their opening matches that they've already played on the day and how they're going to be sizing up going into tomorrow you don't want to be going down to lower round one uh this early on in a double elimination bracket when there's only so many teams inside of it yeah oh well we've got the st clair saints tamu maroon which is texas a and m esports but uh, we want to take a look at our map set real quick because with raid moscow and raid being our first three maps here which will uh, at least be our guaranteed set of maps you got to really start thinking back to what we saw a little bit earlier on and proper you can kind of talk a bit more about the first match between uh with, with saint Clair at least on our bravo stream because uh they had some comebacks that were what some would call miraculous and others would call a breakdown from their opposition yeah, so when, you, when you're looking at the best of five map set, there's going to be a very key focus on that map number two. Moscow Search and Destroy was previously played versus Penn State, I believe, on the Bravo stream like you were talking about. St. Clair, they, they were down 5-1. They won five rounds in a row <clears throat> to win that map, and then to go on to win the series. They were down every single map, and we'll get into it further as we're loading into our first map here between St. Clair Saints versus Tamu Maroon. Be able to see what these two teams have to offer. Again, a, a very different look for Tamu Maroon with St. Clair and Saints. What we're being told from their, or I, I guess their, their recent bias caster that we have on our Bravo stream in Timor, that they were looking pretty good. But as far as the opening breakoff is concerned, the, the brawl for P1, Tamu standing pretty darn tall. They got ring control, and they're looking for the back laundry as well. Well, you can start to see those two arrows, players number five and seven, Quiet and Brother Bylaw are pushing over towards the back, trying to find those laundry spawns. Priestley's got to be careful, though, because this is going to be a, di di a very difficult gunfight to win, specifically against two different players. But as I say that, all four players from Tamu Maroon will go down. They're back to the respawn block all the way across the map. So any semblance of a push that they got set up on that south portion, looking for spawns over at the kitchen, completely out of the question, completely out of the water, and a costly team kill there is going to even things out. It's going to be a three versus three over towards point two for the break. Yeah, I mean, what a collapse, right? You for St. Clair Saints, you know, they recognize we got two players back inside the kitchen. We we can make a formidable defense around this as the other players are starting to rotate back through the middle of the map, and they're able to hold strong. P2 has now popped, and St. Clair Saints are in. They have the close response to Tamu Maroon. They gotta break this in the front. Briefly coming around on the flank. On five in a row, you find potentially two more kills, maybe for some streaks. Won't be able to get the last kill that's needed, though. And as Quiet will stay alive, the last player alive for the side of Tamu out in the front. So wait for the break to come in. Gorilla's got the pre-aim. Both players from the set of St. Clair that are inside of the hard point right now are playing this so perfectly. And as Soft finds two challenges for the third, once again, the beautiful bait and switches, but most importantly, the side of St. Clair's, they are playing so well together right now. They're a well-oiled machine. They're looking to go forward. And I think what Seymour was saying beforehand with St. Clair's playing the way that they are right now, they are looking quite good, at least through the first two hard points. And at least they're giving themselves a, at least a recognition. Now we got to set up for new. But you see where Priestley's located at. On board with them. 7-1 for the young lad from St. Clair Saints. Pushed up inside a red. That's actually going to force Blake to spawn all the way over by P2. But they slip the net. They have to find some pretty good timing here past Gorilla to be able to find this kill. Or vice versa. Blake ends up finding the first. Now you guys are turning around if you're Priestley. Maybe because Blake is able to find that two-piece. But on off screen, you're just overwhelmed from the AC side. All Tamu Maroon for their setup. Got completely overwhelmed. But Tamu spawned right nearby on driveway. Gyra, first one in. Contested hard point. 40 seconds left on the hill. Tons of time to rack up for either of these two teams. But now you're going to be looking towards the front of the hill. Three on three. Gorilla will find two. Sauce finds yet oh, another man. kill. And there goes Gorilla for the third as well. Three in a row now for Gorilla. Everybody from the side of St. Clair's has been on a tear on a mission here in map number one. They want to get further into the winner's bracket. They want to advance themselves to the semifinals in the upper portion. You don't want to face that lower bracket just yet. Because it's proper mention beforehand. It's shark infested waters. 
and there's nothing scarier than losing your potential for tournament win right at the beginning after getting dropped down to the loser's bracket still you have an opportunity but again you're still up to 123 to 23 you've got a 100 point margin of a lead and now as you start to look towards the basketball courts you don't have streaks to break in but with the way you've been able to tandem together for kills around the map it would seem that you have the upper hand advantage even while on the outside looks good. I mean, I, I'm just getting PTSD for two, three. Okay, never mind. Blake, Gira, able to combine for three. Priestly, though, is still alive. Back jungle could potentially find themselves. Yeah, hey, there comes the couple of kills. Very unfortunate timing there for Gira. They're going to get shot in the back or just get absolutely sauced on from the front by Sauce themselves. And the push through for, through Spiral Staircase. It's always been Priestly. Yeah. They're 13 and 2 for crying out loud. <laughs> on a five streak, able to find kill number 14. Gonna get more challenges from the front. Let's see if they can find them. The quick little challenge, the shot punch from Gira will put that streak to rest. But that influential spree, just being able to rotate on out within the final moments, about 10 to 8 seconds when yep. the hill is closing out, and to do influence their way into the back end of these very crucial moments. The Camu just have no answer yep. at all. Uh, to the pace that St. Clair Saints are currently setting, it's 136 to 63. Now you have to look at the setup towards P5. And St. Clair Saints, yet again, they know exactly where Tamar are located at their ace of the hole. Blake's got to go big. I mean, you said that they have no real answer, and what we saw at the end of the P4 Hill at basketball was two players from Tamar Room were inside of the hard point. That was great. You had 20 seconds of scrap time, but there were still two players over towards the water step side, and that allowed St. Clair's to set up perfectly for P5 in middle map with no contention from Tamar Maroon. Thankfully, though, they were able to break in, so they've gotten themselves inside of point number five right now. They're starting to make a comeback here, and it's not off the table that they can still be able to take this game, but it's still looking a little desperate at this point. Gunfight in middle map not going to go to the way of the side of Tamar maroon three players down now everybody the back to the respawn block they're inside the kitchen but right now this is not the exact spot you want to be you want to be setting up for point number one and player number four and sauce is going to be that first player there i mean off screen engagement that could be telling for what we see over on the rotation but as brandon now goes and gets himself on five in a row looks back over towards p1 now can hold off this kitchen push could be looking for streaks for the side of st Clair. Very tough first set of hills now, isn't it? Uh, I mean, every single time that Tam and Maroon have found themselves some legs underneath a, a push, it's coming from Blake, 15-11. The KD ratio really speaks volumes. Nice little challenge out from Brother Blau. He's going to be able to at least find that with the Diamati. Sauce almost ended up converting that into a, a juicy piece themselves. But still, I mean, every single time, Tam and Maroon, they start finding themselves some uh, some some life around the hard point. Maybe they can start really getting themselves on the board. St. Clair Saints are just always really quick to up the ante and absolutely collapse wow. on Tamu's setup. There it is again, Priestley, with a three-piece. Maybe a couple players were weak, but the X-Factor from St. Clair Saints comparatively to Tamu Maroon, Blake needs help. Quiet's engagements, they're just not enough. 7 and 13, 7 and 15 from Bar Brother and Gira. That's just not the influence that you want coming out yeah. from their roster of Tamu. Well, what I saw, at least on the mini map, was when Priestley was making a little bit of a flank up the ramp. I don't know if he spawned there initially or if he was just making a long flank play, but either way, he was able to get behind three of the players on Tam and Maroon. Find those shots. <laughs> That's not a sight you want to see if you're Brandon. All four players pushing around the corner, yet you're still going to spawn with the rest of your team. So that's going to prohibit the push from Tam and Maroon at least for a bit of time. We can have a few players to allow your teammates to pepper up the rest of the kills and then find those initial trades, but that also is going to not only force them on the respawn block, but give your teammates more time to push up the map, gain control of the kitchen, and this is the hill that St. Clair has been so good good at every single time that they get in, inside the hard point they're able to rotate early one flies around the corner they get at least one or two kills and then the other player is there for an immediate trade they play kitchen so well and this is a big portion why the side Ooh. of st Clair saints have been able to not only to build themselves a lead but keep tamu under 100 points hey you can see the timing for blake it was unfolding on the mini map uh, during that poll but now we're just down to scrap time blake just trying to extend their streak needs some help here and they're gonna be the last player left alive again it's very tough to break these p2 spawns as we were just noting in that first set of hills and well blake ends up making the pinch play you saw they wanted it earlier but the, the hit from the front yeah. just lost too many numbers so the break attempt just way too late for uh, for tamu although being in there for a small amount of time you just got to play Flawless Hardpoint. 20 seconds are all you can give up for St. Clair Saints before they close it out. It's going to be an immediate hit through red. Blake goes down. That's your juggernaut for Tampa Maroon. So you got to hold strong. Got to hold strong. Got to play Flawless. But it's one of the hardest maps to be able to create a comeback for yourselves on with how far spread out 
these pills are from point A to point B, specifically when we talk about two, three, and four. Now, St. Clair is broken in. 15 seconds is all they need. That's their condition. Reese Lee around the left, looks for the challenge. Car's gonna blow up back over towards the right. Blake will fall. Wyatt is inside the hard point. Brother Bylaw is there as well. So they hold out, they break back in. They keep themselves alive here. But they've gotta start making this rotate with all the players over towards the basketball court. And then you also can't give up this time on the scrap as well. This is why it's such a difficult decision. You get to send so many bodies to the next point, but you also have to hold on for all the time. Gorilla goes big for two. Quiet's gonna be the last one there. And even though the contest stays all the way through on point number three, neither team will get time. St. Clair will be the ones on the early rotation. It's gonna be basically a one versus three over towards the point. It's doable. We just had a Tam move around to break in, but Brandon's the front force. Finds the first, almost finds the second. From the backside staircase, here comes Priestley. The AR over the top. Tamu is broken in, but again, at this point, it's just a battle of attrition and how long Tamaru can keep St. Clair from getting eight points. And that could have become so costly, but you still got the fight down. Spiral St. Clair Saints just so respectable and waiting for their numbers. And the setup through the backside of Kitchen is just too strong. They know Tamu's coming through from the front because they're inside a kitchen. And here comes the last at that desperate attempt for a hit. It was just too close and it was just too far gone, uh, especially in the, in the early stages for that first set of hills. I mean, the 250 scoreline was certainly going to breach, but as far as an all-time maximum for teamwork is concerned, as far as hard point, the blind trust, the hits, the rotation, turning scrap into initial, the breaks, the holds, everything else in between, absolute chef's kiss out from St. Clair and that opening hard point. This goes to show how good a team can be when they play together. They master a map like Raid. And this is one of those maps that rewards great play with your team specifically. All, all maps do, but it really starts to shine on Raid specifically when it when we yeah. talk about those hard, long pushes that you have to make across the map to get towards that next hard point. We saw the breaks from St. Clair. We also saw them hold down quite a bit. Uh, but I really think kind of the overall theme of that map was the slaying from St. Clair. It, it was top notch, but they also played almost a flawless hard point all the way through, only allowing TMU to maybe get the first 15 20 seconds of a hill or the last 15 20 on scraps they held down the hard point each and every time for more and that's all you need for a nice little win on map number one so a 250 132 score line for the first map proper we already kind of got your thoughts of what you thought was kind of pretty about that going to a moscow search and destroy though what do you want to see from this out of tamu maroon specifically talking about that lackluster slang performance well, you know, you're just hoping that at this point, St. Clair Saints are starting to feel themselves because, you know, again, from all the points that I brought up on the Moscow Search and Destroy before we uh, ended up hopping into map number one on that hard point of raid, this has got to be St. Clair's wheelhouse. They, it was, they were down 5-1 versus Penn State. They were able to bring that all the way back and win in around 11. So that really does say uh, speak volumes as far as great sure. and tenacity. But coming off that hard point, I mean, they were just winning gunfights left, right, and center. Priestley was just finding three pieces just a, 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 for free. They started off their first life 6-0. and zero. I, I mean, these are certain things that you just cannot allow have happen on a map like Moscow Search and Destroy, especially where you have uh, some of the inner workings through Metro, sure. whether you're talking through Upper Staircase, defensively on that brick heady out, out through the loading area, over by the B bomb site, if you can get cheeky with the AR angles, over by Globe, over by that red bus. There's just so many different angles that, that you just got to be very cognizant of if you are Tamu. How do you correct that for Search and Destroy coming off of a hard point versus the team that just absolutely slaughtered you with the KD ratio? You just play together. Worst comes to worst, you get the trade, the damage comes through, you force out the 3v3, from there on out, you just stack, you look at the same angles the team shots here in cold war we've been speaking about it all season long even though it is technically over but in this tournament it still stands the ttk in this game becomes so much faster especially a search and destroy where you do not respawn comes a lot faster once you have two guns looking in the same direction compared to the one just go ahead and just at least guarantee yourself to get in the trades here yeah uh, well i mean you, you take a look at this roster for the side of st Clair's. <clears throat> you look back to last year and there's only one change that they made player wise on this roster bringing in gorilla and swapping yeah. out uh, i believe it was dawson as well so i mean you, you lose dawson last year you, you bring in gorilla they look quite good, but even last year with the roster that they had with Priestley, Sauce, Brandon, and Dawson, they placed top 24 inside of the playoff bracket for this game specifically. So maybe a bit of a revenge tour now coming here inside of this bracket, but more importantly, uh, getting a look at what Gorilla can bring to the table, there were some really strong, solid plays that we saw from him just throughout that hard point in general, which I'm kind of interested to see how that bleeds into the search and destroy as well, because, you, you know, we talk about this all the time watching the amateur scene. Hard point is one thing. s and is a completely different animal. And that's where a lot of really good teams almost tend to struggle at times. Is that search and destroy compared to their respawn? So if Gorilla can be that foundation that they need in search and destroy to pair nicely with Priestley, Brandon, and Sauce as well, this could be a really well-rounded and complete team come next year.
I uh, couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, especially for Search and Destroy the, uh, through many different iterations, through so many different titles, right? I uh, Search yeah. and Destroy to win you championships, it'll win you, it'll win you so many different ships. You'd be surprised <laughs> if you can make this game mode your bread and butter. How do a lot of COD kids spend their time, though, McCorn Meal? You know as well as I do. You do it as well. You play a lot of Search. Sure. Now we got to see what, what these two teams have to offer. It would be very big for this new Tamu Maroon roster to be able to showcase what they have. Uh, again, you, you brought up the points of St. Clair Saints being only having one iteration. How about Tamu Maroon? Yeah, basically yeah. just bringing up Wyatt, the, the captain from Tamu White, just previous time around, making the calls for their team to play very aloof through the middle of the map. It's going to be good to find First Blood on towards the globe. The rotation towards B might just be exactly where Tamu were trying to go, but they're going to try to place for some timing over by A. I, I think they might have expected St. Clair to wrap back over towards B on the defensive side. Either way, though, they'll go ahead and find that first engagement win over towards that A site, make things a four versus two. St. Clair going to have to retake here. Bomb should be going down here in just a minute, so that's going to give them a 45-second timer to go ahead and work against. Two kills, though, there from Priestley somehow make this a little bit more doable. And now you've got Blake going in with Quiet in a two versus two with 22 seconds left. Trades come there. Priestley was able to find the kill from behind. I believe he might be there around the corner. Blake tries to go for the one-on-one, -on -one, a breakdown oh. in the first round of the SD, a four versus two that Priestley finds three and then immediately turns to a St. Clair win. Oh boy. I mean, you, like, you, you call it a brief, you, you, you just call it like a, like a breakdown, but, but at the same time, uh, I just call it a missed call. I mean, there's a lot of different times where, yes, you would say that that's the right call just to be able to, you know, borrow your way towards the opposite side yeah. once you found that opening pick towards Globe because you, you would think, you know, we just found a B defender. More players for A would just rotate over towards B. The thing is that Tamu Maroon, they didn't really get a lot more noise past that. They still had a defender over there looking at the cross entirely, so they just hold their defenders over at A, and, and it pays dividends. Is St. Clair Saints from there on out? I mean, our Tamu from there on out just didn't throw any shoulders. They didn't get the information on the site, and it bites them right in the rear end, even though it sort of looks so good. So now St. Clair Saints look for B push up their own. Tamu, they do have one player towards the middle of the map through Kata. That was quiet, so they might have seen a couple tacticals being thrown out, which is why you see the rotating players for Tamu on the mini-map. This is exactly what Tamu thought that St. Clair's were going to do last time, that there was the first blood over towards that B side. However, now it's going to be a retake opportunity for Tamu Maroon. Priestley will find the first kill has been on fire here inside of the search and destroy thus far. <laughs> and there he goes again. So now two in a row, five and one for Priestley. They look all the way to the back. Gorilla will fall here, but the bomb will be going down inside the site. Blake wants to try and challenge maybe in towards the front side through the small room. And as Sauce and Brandon escape into the window, we've seen this be played a lot of times. However, this can be a very, very sticky situation because you can get trapped in this room extremely easily if a player slides around the corner and you're not able to get those first couple of shots to go through. And a retake could be very, very possible. Now you just got to assume, are they going to be able to break through the street here or are they going to try and wrap around all the way through the window and make a play pinch play? That's going to be the call here. Pushing on in, Blake, the entry fragger with the SMG. Around the corner. Shots are going to be under the first player. Sauce is there. Priestley for the ace here. No, excuse me, Brandon. Brandon will find both of the kills around the corner. Wow. And another round where St. Clair Saints are able to take it that time, though. Somehow that works out for them inside the window. Yeah, I mean, the first player was weak, right? And the second player, because of the clock, you're able, by process of elimination, probably just understand they're going to be closer towards the bomb, if not on it immediately. The comms come through for the first player that was weak for St. Clair Saints. It didn't inevitably drop in that doorway. Uh, that the player was just tight right, probably just laying down, playing their life. That they were, in fact, one shot. And that just allows Brandon just to work their way back in, being able to clean up that that site wonderfully. You know, you, they, you say that they're trapped in there, but some would say they're baiting them in to be trapped with them. But... St. Clair Saints 2-0 lead going in around number three. Tamu back to their mischievous ways through their previous offense, just playing a very aloof through the gold area, the gold alleyway through Metro, trying to find a first blood. Some shots were thrown earlier by Priestley through the cutout. So they're dissuaded from pushing through aggressively uh, through Metro as they did previously, plus they're not finding that free first blood by Globe. Don't want to give away any lives on the offensive side here. Big round for Tamu. To be able to walk away with an offensive round win, more importantly, put them only one round down here in the search and destroy. You start talking about getting about three rounds in between your opponent's lead, then it starts getting a little dicey, and that's when you really got to start pressing the aggression a little bit further, even though you've already been aggressive the entire time. And that's when maps start to get a bit out of reach either way, though. Wrap back over towards B. Looks like it's going to come through. Blake's going to be the first one with the bomb to hop up into the window. 
Should be able to get this down potentially here. Gorilla's got to be careful. Might be able to spot the first one in. Does around the left corner. Gorilla will go big for the second as well. And now you got the Diamati out. You're looking over towards the left side. You barely don't see Brother Bywell. But now it's going to be a one versus three. Ten seconds left. All players are close by, but they can just scatter after the first shot's come through. Ringing home is going to be Priestley. And another St. Clair Saints win here. And in the search and destroy gives them a 3-0 lead. Tamar Maru. This defensive side is going to have to be their boon for Harper. That beat your chest. I mean, Gorilla with the timing. It's just able to just come around and play this bus wonderfully. Had a, a wonderful LOS inside of the, uh, the bomb site itself for apartments. And then knew that there was one player pushing over by Globe. Of course, there would be. Wonderfully played by them. Just saying, hey, Priestley 6 and 2, but we can still you know, bring some game towards the search and destroy. Again, this is seemingly going to be their wheelhouse. See, you do not just come back from a 5 1 deficit on a Moscow search and destroy versus a team like Penn State and live to tell the tale of a map win. They're going to go for this A push. They're leaving one player. It's going to be Gorilla to look through the Metro side. There's only two players here effectively defensively. And Gira, I mean, they got to go big on this bomb. It's also around the corner. Priestley will find the first blood now. Once again, St. Clair in a situation where they have the advantage, but equalize out into a three versus three. Bylo will back off around the corner. Blake tries to oh. slide through. The heck, which isn't going to be there. But Brandon will take that kill off the board. So another technical trade across the map that's going to be in the middle this time. It's going to be a one versus one. Now Sauce finds the kill on the Bylaw, and they might meet here over towards the back side. P2 is going to be the place to be. And as Quiet starts slowly making his way back over towards A, Sauce is on the bomb now. Still not going for the plant, checking every angle, making sure he can't get killed from that side. Doesn't realize that he's behind him, though, so the bomb's going to go down. 45 seconds left, and now Quiet can make the move. I had no idea that Quiet was located at. Quiet might just find some timing here. He's just looking for anything. Right. think he finds the timing. There's sauce for the jump challenge. Had no idea. Never cleared out pillars. Never cleared out the lobby fully either since they pushed all the way through since that initial squabble over by the Zay bomb. And Quiet, living up to their name, just crouch walking all the way through, finds themselves the timing of the engagement, not making a single peep. Finally put Tamu Maroon on the board, and that got really dicey. You know, Tamu Maroon, for, as far as the setup is concerned, would have had a better look at this. I was looking at the minimap the entire time. Blake was effectively just leaving Gira there uh, by their lonesome yeah. to try to play that head glitch on the bomb itself, which is why I was saying Gira needed to go big. If they're not playing all the way back in the lobby, and Tamu Maroon were going to play for a full 4v4 retake, Gira had to at least find one. Go go at least one for one there. Blake wasn't there for the uh, for the help for at least finding a trade. And that was starting to look good for St. Clair's Saints, but they're able to scrap their way through for a first round win. And they're feeling the sauce here. They're pushing towards A. Last time they made this push. Fortunate set of circumstances. They rotated back over towards Bean. It just didn't work out in their favor. This time, though, they go right through the horse's mouth. Sauce gets the first blood, but there's the trade from Priestley. A three versus two. Yet again, an advantage in the oh. life count for the side oh. of St. Clair's. That one doesn't last all that long. This game is lasting a little bit longer than typical Moscow's do, but uh, that round right there, that was done and closed within the first 30 seconds. Yeah, let's see it from Priestley's perspective. There's the first clean shots. Clears out their teammates back by finding Gira and Blake. Hey, how's it going? Was playing in the optic corner and Priestley finds a three piece in that round alone. So I don't think we're going to bull rush towards A anymore. Uh, if we're Tam and Maroon. Hope not. I mean, Priestley just playing that pillar side puts himself off a 10 and three through that three, uh, three piece that they found in that round alone. Yeah, I'm not challenging that anymore. No. St. Clair Saints on the opposite side. You can play to the strengths here that Priestley is certainly feeling themselves. The G slide out. There's going to be an A push, but Tam and Maroon, looks like they read it. Around the left. Once again, you don't want to challenge Priestley. First two shots are going to be there with <laughs> no, the you AR. Don't. Now you hop around the corner. You see Gira laying down as well. Shots from behind. Priestley's there. Quiet. The last one alive in middle map. Looks around to the left. Doesn't spot Gorilla out just yet. Looks back to the Esky side. Bomb going to go down. Six in a row for Priestley. One more kill. We'll go ahead and give them the streak. At least the artillery barrage. Gorilla's going to be the first player there. Shots are going to come through. Sauce with the trade. St. Clair has looked hot, but none hotter than Priestley. As he's led the team now here to a 5-1 to one lead at match point. At risk of going up 2-0 oh, in the series. Is this out of St. Clair? <laughs> just the poetic justice. Saying you don't want to challenge Priestley. He just <laughs> finds collateral damage. Finds the two-piece. Finds the third. I don't think he found the fourth. For the entire race. No, he didn't. He's on six straight. It's it, it's so crazy numbers. 13 and three. Through six rounds. Six rounds well, here yeah. on Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> six rounds into search and destroy. And I mean Priestley started off hot and has not cooled off. And just as soon as I uh was 
Done analyzing Tammy Maroon's last offensive round, saying you probably don't want to challenge Priestley. They're like, no. Oh, we do. We want it. It's a one player rush towards A again. Well, at least Priestley's a middle map and has to wrap back, so you don't have to challenge Priestley directly this time, but Brandon's going to be there with the SMG. Gira around the corner will be able to find the trade, and Sauce just backs off, playing the slow corner over towards the dock side, waiting for anybody to challenge out of the S keys doorway. Priestley holding the ankle in the back, now will spot out Gira. Quiet, still down in middle map, just playing his life. Brother Bilal, and you gotta look for Gorilla, who's coming on the flank now. We'll be able to find the first with the Krig. Gira, down the staircase. Prince was able to spot it. Now Quiet on the flank. Snap isn't gonna be there, and Tamu Maroon oh. round is gonna be through. So you take streaks off the board. You get your second round win, but you still gotta win four more in a row if you wanna tie this series up one-to-one. -one. And, and this was a respectable offense, eh? When you're thinking from Tamu Maroon, I mean, again, you're thinking, yeah, four-player rush over towards A. They're just gonna try to fly all the way through, but but they recognize a lot of power positions. You do you rip the first player, you find the trade, and then you recognize, hey, they still have one player. Gorilla was over by that ship in half wall. And they respect it. They, they just pulled themselves back, just waiting for the challenges to come all through. They, they inevitably get flanked, they reflank the flank, and they just cover all their bases. So a, a, a clean, very nice offensive round out from Tammy Maroon. But now, again, still up on that point. Quiet has been Nasty the past sure. few rounds. What a first blood. But you gotta read that the entire hit's coming from Boulevard side. Oh, Brandon. Hello. Window. Blake's gonna be in the corner. Almost loses the gunfight. Bagheera and Brother Bilo are there for a couple more. Now Sauce in a one versus three. Looks around towards the back. Bagheera's gonna be the first to challenge and will get put down like a sick dog. Quiet now for the second. Gonna be able to get the shots over the top. And Tamu Maroon. They'll win another round here in a row that's too straight. Once again, trying to climb their way back here in the SD. And you know what it's, it's certainly starting to look like comparatively to the early rounds now that we're, you know, uh, decently way through the search and destroy, Alex, it, is that Tam and Maroon, they're playing with a lot more confidence. Quiet's on four straight, eight and five for them. Gear is also taking a, a lot of aggressive challenges. I mean, yeah, they got absolutely smoked in that last challenge in that previous round. But even still, you, you got to tip it. They're, they're getting aggressive at this point, just, just throwing anything out a window. See, so you put sticks. Well, a lot is. So now we're going for a one through one split. Looking through that office window. You got players looking through the Metro side. Bomb included, carrying by Blake. And Quiet's back to these ways. Just going for these jump peaks, see if they can find any info. But that's not a good start to the round. Gear does get first blood. They know one player defensively is on Boulevard, at least. Now you start to push back over towards A again. Brandon's going to be the one on the head glitch inside of the office. You look back around the left side for Sauce. Bible's going to be the first one to make this challenge. Sauce is going to be there, wins the gunfight. Blake tries to go for the trade. We'll find the second one to Brandon as well, but doesn't realize a player is going to be coming over from the office side. Doesn't get spotted out just yet. Down the staircase, in the middle map. He spots Gorilla out. This could be huge. This is a one versus four, by the way. So as he goes up the staircase, he's going to spot the first one. Knows Gorilla's around the corner. Oh, almost does it to him as well. St. Clair escapes the round. Had the information, just wasn't able to find the last few shots. Thankfully, Priestley got him a little weak in middle map beforehand. Uh, that that's just so crazy. I mean, Blake was uh, was one ace away from keeping Tamu inside that. They go massive for Tamu in that opening hard point on raid, and then on a on that <laughs> Moscow search and destroy. Jay, just yeah. I mean, it's crazy that it even got that far. You got to think that if Tamu just came out of the gates, they came out of the yep. woodworks in round number one and two in those earlier stages of the Moscow search uh, with the amount of Augusto that we just witnessed uh, in those later rounds. St. Clair were caught off guard continuously eh, because they were just holding pretty standard setups eh, as far as their defense was concerned. Their offenses were pretty linear. That all Tamu just needed was info. The way that you can get that is through aggressive players, eh, through your submachine guns, through flashes. It's just a few rounds too late. The St. Clair Saints, again, like I was coining at the top end of this uh, this winner's round one matchup that we have here, McCormill. That's yep. their wheelhouse of Moscow, Surgeon and Destroy. It was almost a guaranteed win uh, for me personally, looking at the best of five map set. Unfortunate to say for Tamu, yeah, but you got, it's got to be a reverse sweep. You're, you're going in the lower bracket early. Uh, and it's so hard, too, because you want to say on a raid control, this is one of those swing map modes. But after the first hard point, after what we saw in that respawn, St. Clair just had that upper advantage in just team chemistry and i said beforehand that raid was the map that really showed how good you can play with your teammates on a map at any given time and you yeah. go back to that for control i argue this might be even more at least dependent on chemistry and control comparatively to hard point on raid just because of how you have to start retaking and thinking mentally of where you want to place yourself around the map to influence the spawns but also more importantly just to make those complete pushes catch everybody from the, the defensive or offensive side off guard and then take control of the round in that way yeah, I mean, you know, it, it comes down to that one big phrase of teamwork. You know, what's one thing that we did start talking about there in the Moscow Search and Destroy, even going into it, is that St. Clair Saints, they are only really working with 
one different team member comparatively yeah. to last year through this specific title. <laughs> Tamu on the other side of things, I mean, when you're thinking about it from the previous roster that they have being called up from their Tamu White roster, uh, that was their little sister team comparatively to Tamu Maroon last year during the Cold War season, is quiet. Other than that, this is a baby face, fresh roster that Quiet's trying to lead. They, we don't have the landing days. D'Lo is no longer here anymore. They're no longer just absolutely, you know, blazing through all the competition, uh, like what we saw through Modern Warfare year. And, and this is, again, uh, still a pretty good look for them, all things considered, but there's still that one thing for teamwork, that point that you brought up, and that could uh, inevitably get exploited here, specifically in control, on a map like Raid, where it's, uh, you know, sequencing those few zones together is not that yep. hard to do if you're just doing one key thing that St. Clair Saints have been really doing all series long so far versus Tam and Maroon here, and that's just simply outslank. They're fraud. Priestley, specifically, is finding <laughs> themselves three pieces, five pieces. They went 6-0 and through their first life on that Raid hard point, for heaven's sake. And when you're going on to a Raid control map going up against uh, those odds, well, that's pretty scary. Well, folks, as we get ready for our raid control on the other side of a break, you're going to see again potentially the conclusion of this best of five series. But I feel like Tamu Maroon might have something left in the bag to turn this series around. My name is McCormick, alongside myself as Proper Cast. This is the College Cod Summer Open, powered by Efuse. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the College Cod Summer Open, presented by Efuse. We're hopping in here to map number three of this best of five series with the raid control. My name is McCormick, alongside myself as proper cast. But really, what we kind of were discussing before our short break there was how good St. Clair has looked inside of this series, but more importantly, how Tamu Maroon have the opportunity here to turn this series around, start this reverse sweep. It'll be difficult, don't get me wrong. But on raid control, some teams falter in control compared to the lead to their hard points. So this could be that mode that gets them back in this series, gives them the momentum and at least gets them a little bit of a kickstart for a chance at a reverse sweep. Yeah, yeah, it's got to get that you got to get that win in your sails, right? To say to start sipping yep. off that ship to uh to, to reverse sweep lander or whatever that might actually be. I don't know. I would love to see that place. But but still yeah, you're on raid control. I mean, when you're thinking about it from Tamu Maroon's perspective, Quiet was really starting to heat up there at the end of the Moscow Search and Destroy. Play with that certain amount of a gusto, that aggression that we ended up seeing, and just hope that you can find a couple of trades. You're on the defensive side first, and you were almost expecting an A push to come through, but St. Clair Saints for as far as an offense, they find nobody home over by the pool side. Open staircase, it's already been secured. <laughs> They're reading that their players inside of kitchen, inside of money, but I mean, we're already stopping the clock. They're looking to play unorthodox here. They want to get this B zone. Although both of these zones, at least on their own, are a little bit difficult to progress, at least at the beginning, both zones become basically a fortified fortress for the team that's on the defensive side after you allow that to go ahead first. But they get the first tick of progress over towards B, which might be big later on this game, specifically since everybody spawns close over towards the A site. They've got that first bit of progress on A. Now it's on the side of Tamu Maroon to make this push back either through middle map or wrap all the way around through laundry. And this is not the site you want to see because you've already let a tick of progress go on B. You're at jeopardy of now losing this A zone as well. And as that second tick of progress goes through, you're just going to have to chalk this one up to the wayside, say screw it, hit the rotate on over towards the next point try to hold it down and not expend any more lives than you need oh man this is where things can get a little bit dicey two players off spawn not exactly the defensive setup that maybe you were hoping for to for tamu maroon quiet throws a couple shots out you know one player's inside a kitchen though Priestley might just find that off screen they absolutely do brother shots nice absolutely takes down gorilla here is able to clean up that jungle the collapse is in for the defensive team but you still have st Clair saints members just being an absolute nuisance over by the cutout wall finally blake hero they will deal with those two players Get a little breath of fresh air. Life's not too far gone either. It's just a wall now on a one life lead for St. Clair. Saints and Tama Maroon with this little breath of fresh air can start looking at the setup. Just make sure you got players inside the kitchen, win the next gun fight, and then Ooh. look beyond that. Well, that's not good. Everybody on the south, or the, at least the north portion of the map, has fallen over towards the basketball court. You get Sauce, a middle map, who's looking for a few players. Players number one and five gonna have a huge gunfight off screen engagement. Skyra's gonna find two. Now briefly has to turn around the 74U engagement, but Kyra goes big for the third. So now what looked like a little bit of a bad situation for Dam and Maroon as St. Clair started to get pushed up the map. Kyra came down from middle map, almost wins that fourth gunfight as well, but they go one for one now, making a pinstripe kill feed. And as St. Clair starts to get into the kitchen, this is where you wanna see them push if you are a St. Clair fan, because getting kitchen control to then capture that B zone is one of the most important things you can do on raid. 
Uh, Brandon and Sauce, they work their way in here, man, but then immediately Sauce gets traded out. Brandon's just going to have to hold their positioning and just know that the rest of their teammates are slowly working their way in through the pool side. Finally, oh, double boy. challenge comes through. Gear cleans out Brandon from Money Window, but you got the three player stack down low. You got to challenge out every Tam and Maroon. They just simply don't get there in time. The G slide out from the Money Window was just not timed at all. St. Clair Saints. They find yet another ticket of an opportunity to push over towards the full side. Relatively free, thanks to Brandon and Sauce working their way inside a kitchen. They found themselves those two kills. From there on out, the rest of Tam and Maroon knew that they had to get that power position back, but they couldn't get a player over towards the basketball court to contest that initial hit over by the pool side because of that positioning of Brandon and Sauce in kitchen. They were all spotting laundry. Offensive opportunity now for Tam and Maroon. Weren't able to get the defense under their belt. Might have been a bit costly here, but as they start making this push over towards this A zone, you gotta look for Gorilla up and towards top laundry. That's the first blood to go through. So halfway for the first stick of progress on the A zone. Only 10 seconds has ticked off the game clock as a whole. So if they are able to get this A zone relatively quickly, they're looking at about two minutes and 20 seconds of time that they can spend trying to capture that B zone. The couple of kills coming through. Contest doesn't take any time off the actual game clock itself. So Guyver's going to be the one driving force there. Priestley will fall. This should be the A zone captured. Player middle map and Brandon not going to opt the challenge towards the point just yet. However, it is going to be Sauce who stays. Sauce who kills, and Sauce who can now push forward on the map. They're going to deplete all the progress for that third and final tick on A and keep themselves alive, at least for now. And this might be one of those missed calls for Tam and Maroon. Again, on here on Raid Control, I mean, you give yourself a good look at, at attacking the adjacent zone after you lose the initial push here at A, but they're so relentless at this. I mean, Gyra's still here. Gyra wants the zone 10 and 6 for them through these opening few, uh, few round and a half, if you will. The St. Clair Saints, they don't want to give this one up quite yet. They still have Pillars Control. Brandon gets absolutely smoked. You also have Sauce, who's contesting the zone. They're going to have three players look at them from a multitude of angles. The A zone will be secured. St. Clair Saints are okay to throw those couple of lives at, away at that because they still had just a small lead. But now Tam and Maroon, they might just be able to string together this push through back kitchen. You got to go big if you're Priestly, and they have a tree to help things out. Here comes Quiet. Oh, the Semtex is going to be big there. That keeps the defense alive for a little bit longer. You got an extra minute on the clock, so that's cool. But it's awesome, Brandon combined for two. You're still looking for the player inside a middle map, and that's going to be Blake. Couple players now pushing towards Zig. Quiet, Gyra gonna be there. Three players in middle map for the side of Tamu Maroon. And now another player looking to join into the party. It's gonna be a four hit directly through the middle of the map. Gorilla needs to rope it back to help the rest of the teammates out over from the water step side. And is this gonna be a two for one trade here for the side of Tamu Maroon? Make it a three for one. Now you can start pushing onto this zone, but you gotta look for Gorilla, who's all the way over towards the top bedroom side. Can be a nuisance on the back. Make this flank happen for the side of St. Clair and allow the reinforcements to get in towards the point. But as Gyra finds one, you look for Quiet, who's gonna get the shots. Should have been there on the sauce, but sauce will be able to stay alive. Priestley helps over from the top of the cutout. Now this turns around all of a sudden because he got oh. four down with a two piece back and forth. Gorilla Priestley go big on the defensive side. And he got a five life lead now. If you are the defense for St. Clair Saints, Tamu on the opposite side of things, probably only really looking at one good last hit to try to work their way over here. Gorilla finds one of brother. And they see two more, and they eat a lot of shots, but they get away with their life. That's what's most important. So that's going to be the call. Sauce is on the flank, but they didn't read that brother had spawned back in. So two kills do come down. Make that three. Blake is ripping players off of these positions. So you got to start working your way across the pool side. The biggest problem right now for Tam Maroon to try to convert this into a Bezo take is that they don't have open staircase. That immediately gets rectified. But would love to see a player try to work their way inside the kitchen, but look at the positionings. They're looking at all the LOSs, but St. Clair Saints on the hop-up. Just try to work their way back in, and they're able to do it. Last player there, Brandon finds the second kill. Priestley and Gorilla go big, and now you've got Brandon, who's all the way back over towards the bedroom, force spawning Tamu Maroon down towards that ring portion where P1 would normally be in a hard point. Bila will back off into Ark. Sauce still playing that middle lane, and now everybody from Tamu trying to push from the water, for, at least from the middle portion of the stairs side. It's not going to work out there, at least for the beginning. Brother Bilo finds a second kill, though, so now you can start pushing up the map. You got 15 seconds to work with. Gorilla oh. on the point will find one. Sauce should be there for the trade-in through cutout. You still got to play her over towards the bedroom, but you've got to get to the point quickly. Sauce is there. Brother Bilo will fall. Now you got the last two players alive from the side of Tamu looking to make this push. Only seven seconds to make it work, and as Priestley there, Gaiwa will find the second. Nobody close to the zone for the side of Tamu and St. Clair Saints despite having a little bit of a struggle there on the defensive side we'll go ahead and pull it through they've got a 2-1 or sorry a 2-0 advantage and they're one round away from closing this out in a 3-0 sweep
Yeah, I mean, like, what, what a mental block, eh? just for one day to know that, yeah, you gotta reverse sweep this series, stay alive on the winter side, how do you start the reverse sweep? You gotta reverse sweep in the control, and, and the way that St. Clair have been just been playing, their collapses have been absolutely spectacular across a multitude of different angles, and you really gotta look at Gorilla at 13 and 7, just playing a lot of these longer lines of sight with the Krig 6 in mind, and just always playing out the those certain positions that when, when Tamu is done, at least winning the gunfire, walking away from the trades. Gorilla's always right there to be able to clean things up from afar. Brandon at 17 and 8 has been that player up close and personal along with Sauce, who's been causing a lot of the ruckus up front. And Tamu, they desperately need an answer. And it seems that answer seems to be by way of aggression defensively. Keep in mind, you, they read that players on the opposite side of Zig over by driveway. They clear it all out. Think back to Black Ops 4 when FaZe just needed one round of control to win a series. Oh man. And they got completely reverse swept. Hopefully that doesn't happen here, but his three kills go through there. That's at least going to be a good wipe off the board of the St. Clair players. Now they're going to be wrapping back over towards B, but it looks like Tamaroon has at least the jump now with two players back over towards that B site. Blake trying to slide around the corner, going to be able to find the first. Biolol is there, quiet will fall, but as the trades continuously come through, you got to look to the gunfight against Gorilla. Blake wins that there, and it's a three life advantage on the defensive side. No progress either towards A or B that is solidified. Both those zones can still have bits of progress ticked off of them until maybe Brandon gets back on that zone and I think he's gonna start to hop on it here in just a second gonna be playing the basketball court waiting for teammates to push up the map this might be the wrong play call unless those two players that spawned over by the bedroom side can get onto the point and then you can start forcing everybody from Tama Maroon on the defensive side down to A and this is exactly what's gonna happen this could be big from the side of St. Clair's and now you can get the flank here from the kitchen as well Brandon finds the first Brandon looks for the second and Brandon will find them both big plays there from St. Clair they've gotten themselves worked over towards the B zone and they dealt with Blake on the flank. Blake was able to find an opportunity through Zig, but St. Clair, they were so quick. And now you got a three-player stack towards B. You also got Brandon causing a ruckus over towards A. Yeah, you just chalk it. No way you're making it down that staircase, brother. So now you just gotta be able to look at the, at the clock, look at the lives, just recognize, okay, we gotta slow things down. We gotta get this kill on a Brandon over by ring, because he's stopping the clock. That's our win condition to stay alive inside oh this my. round. Two more kills come through. Brother desperately needs his kills, able to find it. But St. Clair looking for another stack. He got two over on the A side already. One in the corner over by Rocks around the corner. Here comes Gorilla, but Quiet's there for the kill. Two versus two on the site. Brandon goes big for the first one. Looks for the last two players pushing. Priestley is there. Blake, you gotta go big. Blake hits two, but Sauce is there for the trade. One coming down the staircase towards the hill, towards the point. You've gotta make this push now. You've gotta go. You've gotta contest it. No, you can't do it. St. Clair Saints will take a 3-0 win in the control. They'll take a 3-0 series sweep. They'll move on to the semifinals of the winner's bracket, and they'll knock this out of Tamar Maroon down to the shark-infested waters of the loser's bracket. Oh, it's like Seymour said, uh, coming off of that Bravo match versus uh, versus Penn State in, in a crazy reverse fashion. You were down 100 points in that hard point, down 5-1 of the search, down 2-1 with four streaks to persevere through. And then you come in versus Tamu, and, and then you absolutely wipe, wipe the floor with them. This St. Clair Saints team, like Seymour was saying on the Bravo stream, looks pretty darn good. What is their cornerstone? Priestley is that guy, man, with the Craig Six, able to do things that you think that, that submachine guns are trying to do on the map. When you're doing with the Craig Six, and you're still finding long range engagement, still living out the role that you have an AR in your hand, but who's not afraid to get aggressive. When you got a player yeah. like that on the map, this St. Clair team is absolutely going to cause a lot of ruckus through the entirety of this bracket. And it's not just Priestley, by the way. You got to remember that this entire team, the way that Sauce and, and Brandon were just continuously just playing through the inner workings for a lot of different uh, opportunities for that map, specifically on the on the raid control and the raid hardpoint, just opened up so many opportunities for players like Gorilla and Priestley to just always be in these power positions, just to always seem like it, it was just flawless gameplay that was continuously coming out from St. Clair. Well, now that this series is over in a 3-0, St. Clair, as I said beforehand, will be moving on to the next portion of the winner's bracket. But we still got games going not only here on the Alpha stream, but our Bravo stream as well. College er, College Cod Bravo is live right now. That match is going on between the Texas teams. UT Burnt Orange as well as Texas Tech are going up against one another right now. It's a 1-0 lead for the side of UT Burnt Orange, but Texas Tech looking to make a comeback in the S&D. And Prof, we look to that portion of the bracket, uh, at least in our winner's side right now, uh, could you guess who 3-0'd the side of Penn State Blue? Uh, it oh, it couldn't, be, couldn't be Ottawa. 
No, couldn't be couldn't Ottawa. Be. No, couldn't be. Yeah, so Ottawa's already made it to the semifinals. We have St. Clair, who's made it to the semifinals as well. We'll wait for the winner of SCU Blue in Purdue Cod. SCU's up 2-1 to one in that, and as I said beforehand, a 1-0 lead for the set of Burnt Orange up against Texas Tech. So uh, right now, that's what we're looking at inside of our winner's bracket. Penn State Blue awaiting the loser of UT Burnt Orange in Texas Tech. And of course, Tamu Maroon going to be awaiting the loser of Purdue Cod in SEU Blue. Either way, now with that out of the way, we're going to kick it to a short break. As I said beforehand, during our intermission time, Go ahead and check out College Cod Bravo to go ahead and fin watch at least the finale of that. They'll have another match going on on that stream as well. We'll have our semifinal coming up here next on the Alpha stream. Now, we can kick it to a break. It's happy. It's good times. My name is McCormick. Alongside myself is Proper Cast. We'll be back here for the College Cod Summer Open, powered by Ethus.